approximately three million dollars over the past seven years. Um, there has been significant discussion at the state level through our legislatures, legislators uh, to reduce this transfer, or, uh, at least minimize the amount that is transferred. Um, that has finally taken got some traction this year um, through various House bills, Senate bills uh, that is supported on both sides, by the Senate and the House. Um, the, the bill that was actually approved was Senate Bill 1487. Basically what this bill did was it reduced how much that was going to be transferred to the Department of Public Safety. The amount that was transferred or was transferred uh, this past year was 119 million. It reduced that to 89 million, um, a reduction of 30 million. And then <clears throat> so that 30 million dollars was restored back to the per fund. What that meant to our county uh, based on our unincorporated population and our fuel factor was $275,376. Um, those dollars are, you know, although this is called a restoration, those dollars are not actually restored. They're just, they're just stymieing the, the bleeding that's going on. So uh, keep in mind that it is a, it is a trend in the right direction. That this is uh, this bill is for the next three years, so this reduction will happen this year, next year, and in year three it will be a $60 million reduction in how much they uh, transfer to DPS. So uh, just keep you in the loop there. It's a, good, it's a good direction that we're going to stop this transfer, but that's, just to put it in perspective, that's $3 million that could have been spent on county infrastructure uh, roads in particular, it was not. So. That's all I have. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Okay. Is there any questions, Mr. Chair? Mr. Wager. I just want additional thought. Um, there are 70,000 people in Apache County. Uh, we only have three incorporated communities of St. John's, Springville, and Eager. I, I haven't added up how many people live in the three, but roughly 10,000 or less. The rest of our population is unincorporated. If you look at the, the sheet, the unincorporated population factor under Apache County, it's interesting that our factor is larger than many other counties that are much larger than us, say Cochise County, for example, Coconino County. It's interesting that our, uh, that our HERP is influenced so much by our unincorporated population because it is part of the formula. So we benefit greatly from our population in the county that is unincorporated. Just wanted to bring that up. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Okay, Mr. Chairman, if you if you would allow me, I'll talk about I'll talk about the pill for a second. Okay, sure. There's a letter on the screen before you, and I have a handout sitting before you as well. This letter was started by uh, Representative Gosar. And it was sent to uh, the chairman of the committee that works on the tilt. <clears throat> this is for fiscal year 15. They're encouraging that committee to fully fund the PILT for fiscal year 2015, which is the money we'll receive next year. Uh, for your information, uh, the year we're in, fiscal year 2014, is the last year that it was mandatory that the PILT be fully funded. Uh, that, man that mandatory status started in 07 and ends in 14, which, mean they didn't, which means that if they funded the field, they had to fund it fully. That ends this year. And next year, uh, they'll be looking at doing the field again. And anyway, if you'll, Bethany, if you'll move to the table of the field, please. And just for the public's information, PILT stands for Payment in Lieu of Taxes. It's the payment that we receive from the federal government for federal land within our county that we can't tax. So it's their way of making up for that shortfall that we experience. Okay, if you look at this table, it says fiscal year 2015 estimated PILT at $1.681 million. That's what it would be if it's fully funded. But historically, when it's not a mandate to fully fund it, if it's discretionary, and it was discretionary from 94 to 07, uh, Congress only funded the PILT at 66% of the full amount. 
And if you do that calculation, that number is 1.1 million, 1 million 109 thousand as you see there. So what I want to make you aware is that uh, uh, if they go back to what they've historically done, we will not receive the full PILT, PILT, PILT funding. It'll be 66% and that will be approximately 570,000 less than we received for the last five years. So we will definitely be looking at that as we go into the budget process. Uh, the PILT has been a big discussion around the state uh, because of the fact that we can't count on it. Some counties are, some of the larger counties are not going to put it into their budget. Um, the smaller counties don't have that luxury. If we don't count this in our general fund budget, it automatically puts us into a crisis. So we, along with uh, the other small counties, will we put it in our budget and hope for the best. And anyway, just wanted to bring you up to date on that, and especially the possibility of uh, the lower amount coming in. Okay. Any questions from supervisors? I just make a comment, uh, Mr. Chairman. It, it, it is a uh, it's a uh, it's a, an obvious issue that the federal government has trouble funding things uh, since they are uh, going more and more into debt, and it is a threat to our communities and our, our towns that are so dependent on the federal dollars. I ask you to consider that uh, we would be in less of a crisis if we lost that five hundred thousand dollars if we had not uh, given raises to the people who are here uh, last year. Those are the issues we need to think about carefully uh, as we uh, go towards the crisis in this United States with the debt rising and the government's actions moving more and more towards cutting off the funding that we've depended on for ages. I'm just asking us to look back from a conservative value as we move forward. Uh, nothing we can do about it at this point, uh, but the trend is not positive in our respect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it's just, this is just for the board's information, right, Mr. Winger? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. Okay, if there's no other question, we'll, we'll continue on to uh, item 9, Mr. Winger. Yes, item number nine is discussion and possible approval of the renewal of the agreement between Apache County and Veritas Research Consulting to serve as the Apache County Natural Resource Coordinator. This uh, contract is with Doyle Shamley. Veritas Research is the name of his company. For your information, there's a couple of changes to the contract. One is that it would be moved to the calendar year instead of the fiscal year. Uh, the, the contract has been changed to say that it goes into effect January 1st of 2014 with an automatic renewal for a second year unless terminated by the parties. So it would be good for two years unless we terminated it early. Now the dollar amount of this is a $38,000 base contract. Uh, Mr. Shamley charges $40 per hour for his work. And then we have two uh, additional items where Mr. Shamley can charge us up to $12,000 for reasonable and necessary costs. Uh, in state for travel and cost of hiring of experts and things like that, and then an additional twelve thousand for the same kind of work for out of state that he's asked to do. So there it is before you. Did I lose you? No, we're <laughs> we're, we're thinking about. It. Um, any any questions, comments? On uh, this? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would uh, make a motion to approve with the comments. Okay, there's a motion uh, to approve. Uh, is there a second on this? Second. Second. Okay, discussion. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have some comments. Okay, comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Mr. Shanley, uh, I, I want to speak on his behalf in respect to the uh, tremendous capabilities he has and for the work that he has done for us up to this point in many areas associated with uh, communications with the uh, various agencies 